for joining. Uh, I work here as Angular team technical lead. We work on very interesting and quite big e-commerce project. And today I will show you how to build your awesome library of reusable components in Angular. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic. Let's say you want to have your library of components. And here on the first slide, you can see the first citizen of our library. So that simple collapse panel, it uh, in collapsed form, it has title, it has collapse toggle, and in expanded form, we can see collapsible content. And uh, really, you might be thinking that this situation is rare and only like uh, cool guys that build Angular material or NG bootstrap libraries like face such problems. But I must say you not really because uh, now it, here in our project, we do have our library of components that are shared through all the system. This might be, for example, buttons, snack bars, uh, status bar, some inputs, some collapse panels, as I showed you, some accordions. And even if you use some external library uh, to provide you with these components, usually they are wrapped with our own code because we need our own settings, our own stylings, et cetera, et cetera. So even wrapped external components go to our component library. And in previous project, it was really big company. So we had to build our shared components like from scratch, we were not using any provider. So everything like accordions, uh, buttons, collapses, wells, uh, snack bars, notification, everything was designed by us. So I have faced these issues a lot, but really like it doesn't have to be a library of reusable components at all for you, because if you follow component-based approach for building Modern UIs, you, you also need to know how to make your components more great and more reusable, because as our UI is component-based, we have to reuse this well. So going back to our panel, now when you look at it, you may be tempted to write your panel like this, using input. So we have title, we provide title as a plain string, we have content. We provide content also as a plain string here. So uh, this is really familiar for your implementation. Pretty simple. It works, but the problem is really soon you'll start facing a lot of issues connected with that because your users of the library and developers of your project are also, of course, users of your library, will want some customization because that solution will not fit all the cases. For example, someone might need title on the right side, someone on the left side. You might need different font sizing, colors. Uh, someone may need toggle icon. Someone may say, I don't need toggle icon at all. Someone would like to use another icon for toggle. And very soon, if you go with input-based approach, that small situation will become this. Input for everything. Your component grows and it becomes more cluttered, less maintainable and uh, we will end up with an anti pattern that is called like gut component that does everything, has settings for everything. Uh, really, it will be very, very hard to live with this. And uh, 
someone might say, I want, for example, two buttons in the title of my collapse panel that control panel and control something outside panel. Like you can't do this with input at all. This is impossible. <clears throat> so once more about the problems, like such component is hardly reusable because your users of the library, they cannot like make this library, you know, your own. They cannot style it properly. They cannot do whatever they want without what? Without modifying the code. So here, what do we have as well? It breaks our open closed principle. And you might say like, okay, that's Angular components, like is solid actually applicable here? But from my perspective, why not? Why shouldn't we uh, apply our solid principles to Angular components, especially like in a component-based UI flow, like should component be responsible for thing, single thing and do only one thing, single responsibility principles? Yes, of course, I, I think it should. Uh, like should component be open for extension but closed for modification? Absolutely. And uh, here with input, it's not closed for modification. You have to modify each time user wants to change anything. So that breaks this uh, principle too. And as I mentioned, soon, soon really, very soon this will lead to dozens of inputs. And uh, some of you might be thinking right now, like, ah, I know how I will tackle this problem. I will use template reference. So what I will do, I will just swap my title input from the plain string to template ref and inside uh, our main component where we use collapse panel, I will just use ng template with title and inside my collapse panel, I will just render our ng template with ng template outlet reference. Like if someone of you doesn't know that uh, reference is meant just to render ng template in some place, uh, so I pass our title by template ref. I render it here perfectly, like I can put inside ng template whatever I want. I can style it. Voila, the problem is fixed. But again, not exactly. Why? Because collapse panel, it's, it's really, it's very simple component because what do you have there? You have only title, you have content. Yeah, definitely you can pass this with ND template, but what if you have accordion? Accordion that contains of multiple panels and uh, you need to style all of this. So soon you will add up not with one or two ND templates as shown here, but you will have like few of them and there will be a cross reference between this and the templates that is presented here on the slide. And uh, this code, it breaks our natural HTML flow. So like, like not having like tag inside tag, inside tag, inside tag, we will have like ng template under ng template under ng template and with cross referencing. So, like, you have to build that mental model, you know, inside, inside your head, not just looking at the HTML. So, what is much more better solution for this problem? These are content projections. And here, what you can see on this slide is just simple parent component. Let's imagine our parent component is just a container that takes 
some content inside, let's say some HTML. HTML, you might ask, can we put inside our like Angular selector, that selector for our container component, uh, content projection parent, can we put some heading and some paragraph? Like, of course, of course you can, but with some little tweak. So what is inside our content projection parent? We should put special tag, ng content, that allows us to use the mechanism for content projections. And like content projection is a mechanism where you take this outer HTML and put inside our Angular component, aka projecting. So how does it exactly work? Like to visualize this more, we have our header and we have our paragraph and it just while compile time, it takes this and uh, takes this out. And then during runtime, it puts this inside ng content directive. So this arrow shows where does it go. So this should be right inside hello from parent component main header. And indeed, this will lead us to such rendered result. So we have our main hello from parent component header and uh, our second header that says content is placed beneath. And that exact situation is called single slot content projection because like we have only one slot that's called ng content where we project our HTML. Now I did some more tricky situation. You see, it might seem very similar, but what I did, I just reversed our header and our paragraph with each other. But still I want to achieve our previous result that's not changed at all, that has first off content header and then our paragraph. Can we achieve this? Yes, we also can achieve this. No problem at all. <laughs> what we need to do here, as you can see, I added two ng content tags. First one stays unchanged, that's called default slot. And second slot now has some attribute. This attribute is select title. And what it tells to that slot, like from the projected content, take only this HTML tag that has title attribute here. So we have like our header, it's second, but it has title attribute and it's projected first to the place where we have selector and only then everything else goes to our default slot. And this is called multiple slot content projection. And you know, like it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be attribute at all, this can be any CSS selector. So as like with our directive or component Angular selectors, this might be anything. So the example is very similar to the previous one, but now I don't use default slot. I use two selectors that select just HTML tags. So multiple slot content projection using selectors that are not attributes. And, and as I am quite hands-on guy, I don't want to bore you, you know, with uh, more slides and more theory. So let's jump into some 
practical part. Okay, so I have prepared here some solution. It's a monorepo repository. So we have here application. That's our content projection demo application. And it has only up component. Up component has site wrapper and our one collapse panel that can be open or closed. And here beneath, I have some libraries. And I have our library of UI components that can be shared. And here I have collapse panel component. So pretty simple. It has a place to put title. It reads title input property. It has body. It has content input property, and that's the result. So here we pass our, our uh, data using content production. And let's say our user wants to have two of these, and I will add some just margin top. So sorry, that's not top margin top so they are not like too tight. And let's say this would like to be styled in a different way. So first off, we should enable this and, oops, no, I don't want to do this, and rewrite our component. So now I am removing every HTML that I have inside title and I put here ng content, content and I would like to select our title attribute. And here in the content, I would like to select our content attribute. And for this to give me more control where I will use this, I will remove some styling. I will not use our title flexible. So let's recompile. Of course, our content disappeared. So now we go back and here, I remove these attributes and let's say inside title, I want to have as it was before, I want to have span like first title, first title, and I want to have also toggle icon, let's put it 24 p 24 widths, 24 height, and source is prepared by me. Asset Chevron SVG. And for content, I will just have hello from first projection. Let's recompile and see if that works. Almost. It's acid, it's not acid, of course. Uh, It looks like you have one extra CPR collapse panel closing tag on line two. Uh, because yes. you have one on line eight, yeah, and one on line two. 
Yes, so this automatic autocomplete sometimes is not helping at all. Okay, so we have our content projected into our slot, but it looks a bit ugly. So let's add some styling. We will add some class first title. And here, first title, I want it to flex. I want to justify content between, and I want to align items center. Let's recompile. And you see, now it looks much more better. We have styled our component, but we do the styling not inside collapse panel component itself. All is happening, as you can notice, inside our app component. And let's say our second user wants something more awesome. So first we will put button. Button that will trigger this panel open and close. And we will put some spun that will say second second title. Okay. As button is situated inside our title and I already have event handler on title, I don't want this button to pretend like it's functional. So I will just stop propagation of that event. So you can see that button does nothing from the beginning. And of course, I forgot to wrap all of this inside my title selector directive. And now, Content, I want more fancy content. So I will put a header here, like header from content. And I want green paragraph. So they look differently. Um, the green paragraph. And when it will be rendered, it will also be not very nice here. So I will put some margin right of 10 pixels so it's not all squashed together. Recompile, as you can see, clicking on open close does nothing. But when I expand, I have here my other styles, other format, new HTML that says header from content. And uh, that's all is happening just inside app component. No line of code was added to our collapse panel. That's, that's really, I, I really like this mechanism. That's magic. Okay, but let's go back to our button. To make it work. First, I will add toggle method and that simple method that just triggers our panel open or closed. And of course, I will export this component as collapse. So if you don't know that the mechanism to get reference to this component inside the template, and now I will go back to my template. I have here extra closing tag, but somehow it was compiled, lucky me. <laughs> and I will add here template reference variable that will have our exported collapse. And to make this work, what I need to do for the button, is just read our template variable and 
use toggle method that we have written before. Let's recompile. And as you can see, now when I click on open close button, it also gives us the possibility to toggle panel open and closed. And uh, by the way, such mechanism of export S and uh, uh, having that reference to your component, it's really widely used by uh, these cool guys that write our favorite libraries of components that we use in our projects. Okay, uh, what can we else uh, do here? For example, you can see that this toggle is not uh, responding for my actions. So with using same mechanism, we can also make it more live. So I will here read our export and collapse as well. I will add here some class called toggle and also class. Uh, I need class open, but I need this class only when our panel is open. And let's add some behavior here. So toggle, let's add some transition. So such amount of milliseconds is enough and some easing for it to be smooth. And when our toggle is open, we will add a transform and just rotate it 180 degrees. Recompile. And voila, it's being rotated once more. So as you can see, component is reusable, you style it, whatever you want. You add whatever you want functionality without any code modification, if it's properly written, of course. That was easier part by now. And now I would like to show you something really, really cool, like uh, how it's really done in professional libraries. So we have a situation that, of course, like now I can uh, use content projection, I can style it, whatever I want, but uh, you force your user like to style this content each time they use our content panel. But what if they like our default style, for example? They don't want anything fancy. They want result really quickly. So what we can do here is combine content projection and template reference that I was mentioning at the beginning of that speech. But to make this work, we need some some interesting code to be added. I will start with direct. That will be selector for our title. And this is usually in such case based on template. So ND template with an attribute title. ND template looks like no typos. Export class title directive. And here in constructor, as I will use ng template with this directive, I need a reference to that template. So let's add template rep of type template rep any and add parentheses to our constructor. 
the same directive I will use for content. So ng template, but with attribute content. And we also want template reference to be passed inside constructor. Not to forget, I need to declare them and export in our UI module. Otherwise, it won't work. So uh, content directive, oh my God, where are you? I forgot to rename content. So content directive, cool. Title directive, content directive. Okay, done. They're being provided by our model. And right now I will use a special decorator. It's called content child. For title, it will be our title reference. And I'll tell Angular that I know that it will be populated. It won't, it doesn't need initialization. And same for content directive. That will be a content ref. Okay, edit. And now I would like to concentrate for a moment on those directives. So a lot of you are thinking right now who are not familiar with this directive, but you might think, okay, that sounds familiar. Actually, it looks like view child directive. And uh, really these are sister directives. I would say they are just happen on different content life cycles, uh, component life cycle. So we use view child where we want to reference some directive component or template in a view. And uh, these are populated on lifecycle hook after view in it. But content projection like happens a bit earlier. So after content in it, lifecycle hook happens earlier than view in it, when actually this content is projected by runtime inside our component. So with those directed directives, content child and content children, you actually can have a handle to something that not exist at the compile time for the content that will be projected. And to demonstrate you a bit time in the future, I will implement this lifecycle hook. Let's implement it and let's console log our title ref. But of course, a little bit later because for this to work, I need some more changes to be done. Okay, right now I don't need this second, I don't need this second panel, so let's comment it for now. So it's not, <clears throat> not uh, in our way. So what I will be doing right now, I will add ng template. And this content goes inside ng template. But now I have to use this attribute on ng template for our directive to work. And here I will just change this div to ng template. And let's recompile and see if it works. Not really, and that's intended. We need to add some more changes. I will show you which. 
So we have like, you see now ng template with our title attribute and the template with content attribute. What is happening in the right uh, runtime? So these templates are populated here inside these directives, inside those template refs and selected by content child attribute but we need to add this to the code. And I will just check my activity monitor quickly because, because my, uh, oops, sorry. My computer is really hanging and, and I don't like the situation. So let me just restart application. I, I think it should clear some resources and I will start it once more. Okay, but going back to our directives, to use this combined situation, I don't use ng content anymore. I will use our ng container. ng container is just a tag that's not rendered by Angular, it's container for anything. And inside our ng container, you are not working anymore. Yes. Can be can it. Apologize for that. I will put my favorite template in G. Template outlet. And here I use our title reference, template ref. Here I will copy this, but I need my content ref and reference to this template. Let's recompile and see if it works. Not really, because I made a typo. One more recompile. Voila, we have our content projection working once more. As, as this is really advanced technique, I, I really get this. I will uh, go once more slowly what is happening here. So our ng container renders here our template reference template reference to title and content. But these templates, they are being content projected. They being content projected by content child decorator. And that's decorator reads directive. This directive will appear only in runtime when it's uh, projected. And this directive reads our template with title and content attribute. And this template is inside our app component. So where we actually like use it and add all this stuff. But why I am bothering with such pretty advanced mechanism where you have to write a lot of code. As I mentioned, we need we want to uh, give to our user some possibility to have default styling without problems to style it for the user by himself. So I will add here ng template that will be our default title template. I will view it here our input title. I will have the same for the content. And here I will just make this optional and give template ref from content projection or title. And here I say, please read template reference from content projection or our content. 
our inputs are here in place. So let's go here. Let's implement this second component. Now we need it. Hanging once more. But, but we don't need any of this fancy stuff here anymore. So I will just use title, second title, and I will use content, second content. Let's recompile everything. And you can see. Now, first one is using content projections and it's fancy. They look uh, pretty the same. So to show that it's fancy, let's add some color here. Style, color, green. Okay, so this one is fancy. It has styling. It has our toggle that goes round and this is really very very simple we have just title of second title content of second content these are provided by inputs so first one uses content projections with z directive so directive reads ng template it goes inside content child and second one uses inputs and now our template here looks at this component and decides do we have content projection title reference with template ref if yes render this fancy if not just use sample title from the input and that's all folks that i wanted to show you from our practical workshop today do you have any additional questions to this feel free to ask it seems that no one has any questions so i'll stop our recording uh, then i will share it with you